If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 4, starting at verse 1 through 11. We're not going to read that yet, so you don't have to put it up there yet. Carlene said it well this morning. The enemy wants to intimidate you. And that was the first word in my message this morning. She didn't know, but um, now she knows that's the very first word in my message, intimidation. But the enemy wants to intimidate you where you have the authority to intimidate him. You really do. He's got no power anymore. He's got no authority over you anymore unless you hand it over to him. Has anybody ever watched one of those fights, those, I don't even know what they're called, whether the MA, what, what they call it, you know, yeah, I don't even know what they're called. I don't, I don't watch them. But I, but I do know that they have this, pre, this pre-fight this that they do, or this pre-showdown type of a thing that they do. So um, I'm going to need Luke. Lucas, come here. He's real tall, and this is going to look good. Where's your dad at? I didn't even see you there. Come here. Would you guys just stand right here. One of you over here on this side. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start this showdown right now. <clears throat> because this is what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to get in your face and tell you what he wants you to do. And what happens is generally when, when someone breaks this, when someone breaks this right here, this stare down, when someone breaks the stare down, that person usually is the one that loses the fight. When you watch these, then one of them gives in. That person usually is the one that, that takes the last blow and loses the fight. And the enemy is going to get in your face and he's going to try to tell you what he wants you to do. <laughs> but what you got to do is just tell the enemy or you just say, get behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Tell him. You see, he broke it. Because the enemy knows he has no victory when we live for God. So what we're going to do, hold on. Leonchi, will you grab this here? Because we're going to wrap this thing with a bow. So what we're going to do first is we're going to shut the mouth of the enemy. Go ahead. <laughs> and we're going to bind him up. Bind him up. And then we're going to tell him what he's going to do. Come here. Bow down. So there. <laughs> Feel that? Yeah. yeah, right on top because it's probably going to fall off. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's done. Now we're going to make the enemy go over and sit down for the rest of the service. So Mike said this morning, he said, that, he said, I feel like we're going to bind the enemy today. Well, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Carlene said, intimidation. That's what he wants to do to us, but we're not going to allow him. Because all we have to do is say, get behind me, Satan. In Jesus' name, he has to get behind us. He has to leave when we say to leave. He has to go when we say to go. So what we're going to say to Satan and what you should always be able to say to him is get behind me and make him do the things that you want him to do. Tell him that when he tries to get in your face, you know, when you are, when you are getting ready to pray in the morning and the enemy has to uh, try to get in your business in the morning. And you just tell him to sit down and shut up. That he's going to sit there and he's going to watch you worship your God. He's going to watch you study the Word of God. He's going to watch you grow stronger, stronger and know that He has no power over you. That's how we should live our lives, in victory. And what I want to talk about today while He's sitting here, hopeless and helpless, there are battles that are going to come in our life, okay? 
in those battles that come in our life, we have to prepare ahead of time to get through the battles. We have to be ready ahead of time for all the things that come our way. All the things that come our way. We get ready in every other fashion of life and we need to get ready for this. We get ready for birthday parties when they come. but We prepare ahead of time. For all these events that we do, we prepare ahead of time for them. We plan our vacations ahead of time. We get it all ready. We have to buy insurance to keep our houses. We have to buy insurance to have a car. We get ready to prepare in case something happens. But we don't do that with our lives, how we live our lives. We don't do that. Most of us get into a situation head on with it as it comes right in front of us not prepared, the phone call late at night. Instead of having victory over whatever's on the other end of the phone call, you go into freak-out mode. How many has ever been in a freak-out mode from a phone call? I have. Monday, Monday, this coming Monday will be the anniversary of my nephew. I got a call late at night, early morning. Fell off a 10-story parking garage to his death. 19 years old. That was a blow. That was a blow to the family. That was hard. That was hard. It's still my sister today. It's it's, it's a struggle. It's her only son. Her name's Donna. If you can pray for her, pray for her because I know she's struggling right now. I understand. But in the midst of those things that go on, we must have a plan. The Word of God is our plan. What we know about Him and who we are. That's how we get through these things. Studying the Word of God. Studying the Word of God. Knowing Him inside and out. Knowing the Word inside and out. And verse chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. We need to fight like Jesus fought. He fought with the Word of God. He fought with the Word of God. He didn't have to throw punches. He fought with the word. And the word that was spoken put the enemy in his place. So we'll read this. Then when Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. He would be. And then the tempter came. You do something good, then the tempter came. And he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to be made to bread. But Jesus answered this and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then the devil took him to a high place in the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of a temple and said, If you are the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written... He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear you up, at least at any time you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered to him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. A third time the devil come to him and took him to an exceedingly high place in the mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of all of them. And said to him, All these things I will give to thee if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Get thee hence from me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and only him will I serve. Then the devil left him, and the angels come and minister to him. That's how simple it is to defeat the enemy. But we live our lives in defeat most of the time. We live our lives in a a, a situation where it's all about us, all about our problems, all about the things that we're going through. Once you know when you give in your selfish desires, your sinful desires this morning that Satan wins. He wins every time when you give in. 
But we must learn to tell him what we want him to do. That we want him to sit down. That we want him to be quiet. Generally, and and probably most of the time, you're not dealing with Satan himself. Remember, he's one place at one time, and probably none of us are big enough for him to even deal with in a personal manner. But his cronies and his thugs are all out there doing the job. And they're getting in your face. And they're telling you what they want you to do, how they want you to live. And I found that when you live in the Holy Spirit, they come at you more, but they're less effective. Let me say that again. When you live in the Holy Spirit, they come at you more, but they're less effective. They come at you more because they're coming from every different angle to try to figure out how to get to you. Because before, when you lived in the flesh, they touched the flesh. And when they touched the flesh, then you feel that and you know that and you, and you act on that from triggers and all the things that are in your life that you've been through and you've done. But the more you live in the Holy Spirit, the more you're on the spiritual side of living, knowing who you are in Christ and whose you are, they, ain't, they don't have much ground to stand on. There's nothing new that they're doing. They're just trying some new things on you. So we must stand our ground and fight this fight together as a team, as a family. When you struggle, you call someone in the family, not outside of the family. You call someone in the family and have them pray over you and pray with you. Because when you take it outside of the family, it all gets all twisted up and turned around and then they go to someone else that's all twisted up and turned around and the next thing you know you got this whole battle outside that's created because you went somewhere and said something to someone you shouldn't have said because it should have stayed in the family don't go telling someone in the world all your problems talk to your family about it let them help you get through those problems you go to someone in the world, you're, you're going to create some more problems. Because they're going to they're, they're going to they're going to create problems for you. Turn to Psalms 44, 1 and 2. Psalms 44, 1 and 2. It says, "Blessed be the Lord, my strength." This is what He does. He teaches my hands to war my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, in whom I will trust, who seduce my people under my feet. The people is another translation instead of my people, the people. God has given us the means to fight the war through the Word of God. He's given us everything that we need to fight this battle that we're in. And I know a lot of you are in different battles. Right now, you're in different battles that the enemy is trying to grab a hold of you and take you through. Don't let him have any ground in those battles. The more that we step up and step into Him, the more we step in the Spirit, the more we grow in ministry, the more things that are going to come at us. It's just the way it is. But if we give Him no ground, He's got nothing to stand on. He falls every time. So don't give Him the ground to stand on. And when you're preparing this, 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 this battle, when you're preparing this battle... Take the time to remember the Word of God, to study the Word of God, because there's going to be times coming, and they're probably sooner than later. You've got all your other stuff situated. You've got all the, all the things set up, your birthday parties. I'm going to one today. All the things are set up. You've got your insurance paid for. But we need, to, we need to pay the price. And take the time to read the Word of God and study the Word of God. Because it's going to be most effective in the battle against the enemy. Most of the time, this is where he's at in my life. Because this is where I put it. 
when I go to bed at night. I don't even have authority. If I wake up and there's something there and I feel anxiety when I wake up, I give it to the Lord and I put him in his place. Throughout the day, something comes my way. I put him in his place. I'll say out loud, get behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. I don't care who's around, what's going on. If I feel him trying to come at my mind, because he works through your mind, you don't have any control over your mind, but he has control. There's things around you that you go through. There's things around you. There's things that happen around the atmosphere around you that you are sensitive to, and that causes you to think certain thoughts certain certain ways. And that's what puts the thoughts, you know. If you struggle with drugs, then there, there might be drugs that are thrown around in front of you. You might see a bunch of people who are on drugs that day. And that triggers something in you. So just say, get behind me, Satan, because that's all he's doing. He knows your past. He knows how you live. He knows who you are. And he knows what's effective in you. He knows what he's done in your life before to make you fall time and time and time again. He knows those things, and he keeps coming at them. So finally, when you, when you are an alcoholic and you walk past the bar a thousand times, he quits messing with that, and he tries to go somewhere else. He'll give up in those areas. He will give up because there's, he just knows he's lost the battle. But he'll come at another angle. He'll come at another angle and try to grab another place and find another weak spot in your life because we, we've had a lot of them and I've had a lot of them and I've worked through most of them. Still, the Lord's still showing me some as I walk. Some weak points, some weak parts of the links that need to be re-welded, restructured so I can live a better life, so I can talk to people better or react to every situation better. How are you preparing this morning? How are you preparing with the Word of God? How are you, I mean, are you waiting until the battle comes right in front of you and then all of a sudden you're like, here it is. Are you waiting until that person gets in your face and cusses you out and tells you off and you're like, how do I respond to this? You should already know. When those things come, we should already know how to respond. Jesus knew how to respond instantly to what the enemy was doing to him. He knew how to respond. We should be in the same way. We should not let anything move us unless it's from heaven. Literally. It shouldn't move us. Something anybody says, I don't care if they tell you you're worthless and, and nothing and nobody, you should already know that the Word of God says that He dreamed you from the foundations of the earth to be an amazing son and daughter. So that Word alone right there debunks what they just said. Because the Word of God says the truth will set you free. The truth about who you are, who He says you are, will set you free in every situation. So when they call you whatever name they want to call you, you just say, yeah, that, that, that's your opinion. But all I need is His opinion. And I know how He sees me. And that debunks it. That, 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 that's like putting coals on the fire when you, when you respond that way. Because the enemy, what he wants you to do is he wants you to react to the actions that he brings in your life. He wants you to react in a bad way. Someone cusses you out, he wants you to cuss them back out. He wants you to rip on them, tear them apart. Do it, do it, do it. And look, he can't even do nothing. Because if we put him in his place, he just can't do it. He just, he's, just sit there and shut up with a little bow on your head. Because he's worthless. He has no value. The enemy has no value at all. And so how are you fighting this battle? How are, you, how, are you, um, how are you fighting this battle? Are you in the Word of God daily? Are you in prayer daily? Are you here on Wednesday night? Listen, Wednesday night has been over-the-top powerful. We pray for an hour, and then we stay for an hour. It's just been going that way. It's been just been incredible. We pray, and then we're here just for the next hour just battling and fighting and loving, loving on each other and just like, I mean, we can't even get out of prayer most of the time on Wednesday night. It's like, do you guys really want to go home? You want to quit? You want to stay for a while? We can stay. What do you want to do? Everybody just stays. It's just like, wow, it's happening. It's, it's, been, it's been so, so interesting. And the charges that are made, the things that happen, just the different spontaneous stuff that's going on. You ought to come and check it out. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. 
You should. You should really this week come and check it out on Wednesday because we're this is we're getting close to the wrap up on in this building. So um, Easter Easter morning. Um, I'm just going to share this Easter morning. If everything goes as planned, if the building inspector is watching right now, we're trying to get this thing done. <laughs> Fire marshal, we love you. We're trying to get this stuff done. But if it goes as planned. Um, Steve Brown will be preaching Sunday morning for the Easter service just to give me a little bit of a break to step into that next thing. And then the, that'll be on the 9th, and then the following Sunday is the 16th, I believe. And then on the 16th will be a soft opening over there. Um, and then the 20th, Pastor Todd will be here the 20th and 21st. 22nd will be a night of worship, and then 23rd will be a flashback grand opening. So... Also, that Thursday on the 20th, we're doing a ribbon cutting at 4.30. The mayor will be here, and we'll be doing a ribbon cutting. There'll be a bunch of people here from the city. So um, come to that if you want, and just be a part of seeing that, and just, just jump in for prayer. It's going to be an amazing thing. I believe my before I finish my message, do you want me to wait till the end of my message, or do you want my wife has something that's throbbing on her heart right now? <clears throat> you Okay. Come, just come up here. Okay, now it's on. What the Lord was putting on my heart when you were speaking all that was, I thought a Jerry, um, our Jerry Pro got a bad report last week about his lung issue and then the Lord reminded me of Miss Tina and Tina got in the water Monday or Wednesday after our last water immersion it was throughout the week we opened the pool for her she's from Florida she's only here for a certain amount of time and she got a good report not a good report okay she has to retest so okay so what I felt when he was leaving bringing forth those scriptures is why don't we put this into practice and if Jerry wants to come up to the front row, Tina wants to come up the front row, anybody else who has um, sickness in your body and let us release the word of the Lord over you. Um, I don't believe anyone did anything for this to happen. We live in a fallen world, but what does the word of God say? Jesus, because of what he's done on the cross, we are healed. He is... Um, he is the way maker. He, he stretches out his right arm of deliverance over our live situations. So even some of the scripture, if you guys could put back some of the scripture, and all of us together, when they come up, I'd like to anoint them with oil. Let's do the part that we know we can do. That's just what was stirring in me, and it can happen in a minute if you want to finish. Let's do that in a minute. Let me finish yeah. up, and then we'll... So after he finishes, I just feel like anyone that has a physical issue... Um, of a bad report. We do not have to believe the report of the doctors. Obviously, we love the wisdom God gives the doctors, and um, we love the medical ways that God uses to heal. But we don't have to believe the report that we would believe what the word of the Lord says. And so for Jerry and Tina and anyone else, you know, that is healing. It's healing. There's a process. Healing's a process unless a miracle occurs. A miracle happens, and it's going to be instant. So either way, God wants to work, whether it be a healing or whether it be a miracle. But we are for that, and um, that is what we expect to happen in this house. We have seen it over and over again, so he's no respecter of people. All right. Thank you. Happy wife, happy life. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Five things I want you to know this morning. I want you to learn how God thinks. By studying the scriptures, learning how God thinks about things, how he proceeds with things. what God would do in a situation. Jesus said, I do only what I see my Father do. So 
to what God would do in a situation, what God thinks are two things. How we can trust God with our lives, with our family, with our emotions, with everything that we're going through. How we can trust God. So important. To know how He sees you is very important. How Father sees you is so important when it comes to defeating the enemy and the woes of the enemy. And to know who's in charge. You know who's in charge always, all the time, so he don't get any ground. So the enemy don't get any ground because you just keep him behind you. And then you know who's in charge. John 8, 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If we stand on that, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. And John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. 1 John 4, 4 says, You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, the enemy, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Greater is he, Jesus, who lives in us than he who is in the world. 1 Peter 5, and there's a, I could have given you a thousand scriptures today, but 1 Peter 5, this is what you need to know, what scriptures you're going to stand on in every situation. Literally play it out in your head. All right, if someone comes up and cusses me out, this is what I'm going to say. If come on some, someone comes up and says I'm worthless, this is what I'm going to say. If someone comes up and says this about me, this is what I'm going to say. If a tragedy happens in my family, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to react. This is how I'm going to respond to the tragedy. Because it can either take us over or we can take it over. It can either have victory over us or we can have victory over it. It's, you have to choose that. You have to choose what you want to do. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like, listen, like, he's an imitator, like a roaring lion. I mean, he talks a big talk and he looks like a big show, you know, but... You've seen what happened up here. He can do the stare down all he wants. He can act as big as he wants to act. But he's nothing. He's only something if you allow him to be something. That's it. It's that simple. He's only something if you allow him to be something. Like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that they're, we're all in this together. And their brethren all around that are suffering some of the same things. Knowing that. There's comfort in knowing that, that you're not going through all these things alone. You're not doing this all alone. There's other people going around. And, I mean, how many, how many, how many, how many has been this past week that the enemy's come and tried to, try to put a wedge in your life? Some kind of a stink in your life. And we can probably compare notes and it's probably the same kind of things across the board. Make you feel worthless. You're alone. You're a nobody. You're never going to get it done. You're never going to amount to much. You're not going to accomplish anything. Just all these different things he just throws at you. Lie, 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 lie. The truth will set you free. Know the truth. Know what the truth is about who you are and whose you are. So I encourage you, because you have been given all authority, I encourage you this morning to stay in the Spirit. If you don't know anything about the Spirit, He's the chatty one of the three. He likes to talk. He likes to talk to you. He likes to minister to you. He likes to witness to you about the truth. He likes to love on you. Tell you what's right when the enemy's telling you what you shouldn't, what you should do. Holy Spirit, I'm so thankful for Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful. I mean, I think that we've downplayed the Holy Spirit down through the years, you know, and the, the churches that I've been in, it's, they've, they've downplayed the Holy Spirit because I didn't really know much. I mean, I love God with everything in me, but I didn't know much about the Holy Spirit till 10 years ago. I mean, I really didn't. I, I mean, it was not, the Holy Spirit was not really talked about. And therefore, there was a lack of power. 
because of the Holy Spirit not being present in my life. But ever since I learned about the Holy Spirit and I learned about who He is and how He's the one, I just thought it was a gut feeling. You just feel a gut feeling to go off that, and it really is the Holy Spirit. But, but He wants to just talk to you and talk to you and teach you and show you and learn you all these things you need to learn about. Because listen, when we step into heaven, it's just going to be a step. We're going to just step and we're there. And there shouldn't be no difference. It shouldn't be a shocking surprise. Like, whoa, we should already know that now. We can really already know that now. Do you know that? Do you guys realize you can literally be in heavenly places here on earth? You can literally reside in heaven as you're on earth because that's what we're called to do, live in heavenly places. We're just here for just a twinkling of an eye we're here in this place. I mean, one day we're here, next day we're gone. I don't know if you ever watched that B movie. There's a B movie that a little B guy and everything's just like perfect all the time and they're all applying for a job and like this job's open, no, it's gone. This job's open, no, it's taken. No, this job's open, no, it's taken. This is open, this is taken, gone, uh, gone, 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 here, gone. That's the way we are. We're here, we're gone. We're here, we're gone. People come, they go, they come, they go, they come, they go. They're all born, then they all go. They're all born, they all go. That's just the way of life. We can't get around that. But we can sure live heaven on earth and be effective in how we're living. Literally, you make that step, and you're like, hey, and you get that hug from Father. That's all we are, just that one step away from that, that open arm embrace from the Father. And that's what it's going to be like when you, when you, so you're going to have all of your living here on earth and all that coincides together and you step right into the Father's arms. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's how it should be. So Shelly wants to do a, stay there. Shelly wants to do a, um, because um, a prophetic exercise to show the power of heaven. So if you're sick, just come and sit on the front row. If, if you got to kick Theo off, kick him off. If you got something going on in your body, come up here and sit. And we're not going to make you stand. We get diagnoses every day of stuff that's wrong with us and what the doctor said. And, and uh, they're, 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 they're diagnoses. And we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world, and, and there's things that go on, and there's things that happen, and, and people die from things. And if we need more chairs, we can, we can take the second row. If we need the second row, take the second row. They'll move again. So we all know what the Word of God says, if you don't, about the anointing oil. It's just a representation of what the Holy Spirit does on behalf of what Jesus already did on the cross. It is just a, a picture of power. It's a picture of our understanding. Um, having the elders lay hands. We don't necessarily have elders. But who here believes? I mean, we all are priests. We really are. We're, we're all priests in God's kingdom. He sees us as his children. So as we're doing this, I want you guys all, as they throw scriptures up, everyone just start reading them out loud because it's the power of agreement. We are a family. Yeah. Real quick, what we're going to do before, before we do that, we're going to be in agreement. So I'm going to say one, two, three, and we're going to shout out, get behind me, Satan, out loud. It has to be out loud. He don't know your thoughts. He don't know your thoughts. So he can't, you can't in your thought go. Because that's how effective it's going to be. Out loud. And, and the reason it's out loud, God created all things that exist by his words. Mm -hmm. Speaking out yeah. loud. So that's the number one oh. tool that we have as Christians. Our words spoken are powerful. Word. The spoken and word. The enemy has to hear and 
we're, do what we say. We're going to break all this off of him when we're done that we've just put on him <laughs> as the playing this part. Um, but no smile. So the count of three. One, one, two, three, and then we're going to say, okay, not on three, but after three. One, two, three, then. Okay. We're going to say, get behind me, Satan. One, two, three. Get, get behind me, Satan. Yes. He has no authority. He's behind us now. Now let's move forward with the power that God has put in us. The power of Holy Spirit. The power of the Word of God. The spoken Word of God. Just so as, as they're putting gave... the scripture up, you guys just read it over, read it together, read it out loud, and yeah. we'll just pray. As, Jace, as Pastor Jason was giving the scripture a little bit ago about Jesus when he was um, being tempted by the enemy, how did Jesus combat that? by the word yeah. so the word is so powerful it is a, a double-edged sword it comes to divide the bone and marrow um, his the healing hand and, and you know some of you may have healing if, if you have healing in your hands um, or an anointing to heal you know maybe come a little closer and stretch your hands out behind them you know just God's moving and working and you're all included in this mm -hmm. um, this is not just about it's about Jesus just healing and touching the people for freedom. And that is our hearts. Is this place be a book of Acts? You know, if you guys read Acts, you know, why are we having a church if we're not seeing these things happen? That is what it's about. It's about life change. And, and I don't know the age of Nancy and Jerry, but they have life to live. He, I found out he's been to Africa. 33 and 34. Yeah, he's been to Africa like three times in Peru on mission trips. I mean, there's life and there's wisdom this man has to offer the body of Christ. So, you know, I don't look at the reports of the doctors and ailments. Um, you know, he served our country well, and that's some of the issues he's dealing with in his lungs is from Agent Orange when he was probably in Vietnam, I'm guessing. Um, so anyway, um, I'm just saying, you know, we're, we're not... We're just going to go after this and not just that this is okay. And for every other person sitting here, you were in agreement with your health situation to be whole and healed. You know, the healing already happened over 2,000 years ago for what Jesus did upon the cross. So everyone just out loud, I don't care how loud you want to be, just release the word of God along with us. And um, let's just watch the Lord. Hold your hands out as we pray.
You guys all, you have all power, all authority. Always, every day, 24-7. You call upon the name of the Lord. You have that authority. Every day, to call upon the name of the Lord. We don't have to say a bunch of words. We don't have to do a bunch of things. We call upon His name, and His name alone will bring healing. His name alone will bring healing. Jesus, the name of Jesus will bring healing. So speak the name of Jesus. For everyone you come encounter with, everyone you come in contact with. But your, your power is going to come from your life living, living that glorious life for Jesus. There's power in that. There's power in that. We thank you, Jesus. There's power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know the outcome of, of what's going to happen with any one of these people up here. But the enemy will always try to trip you up. And if something happens, he'll say, see, I told you so. And that's when you just shut him up and believe the truth of the word of God. The truth is, when you're a Christian, you're stepping into heaven. It doesn't matter when, the timeline, you're stepping into heaven. Some are earlier, some are later. Because of the fall of man. That's just the way it is. And there's some things that we don't understand and you're not going to understand, so don't even try to understand them. If we could understand everything that God does, we wouldn't even be able to exist because we couldn't contain all that God has, all that He knows. He's the beginning and the end. He knows everything in between. He knows your life. He knows about this. This is not a surprise to Him. It's not like you woke up one morning and God's like, oh, wow, you have this thing going on in you. No, he knows. He knows. Our prayer is that, that healing will happen instantly. We want to see it instantly. We want to see a miracle. Sometimes we see it in a progressional state. And sometimes we've had things happen and it is beyond our understanding but we still need to believe that God is in control, that He's faithful, and He knows best in every situation. We have to stand on that. No matter what happens, we have to stand on those things. We have to stand on our identity in Him and knowing that the truth is in Him, that peace is from Him, Peace is a person, taking on the person of peace in every situation. I keep hearing the words divine downloads. So that's for everybody here that needs needs download. I don't know if it's ideas. I don't know if it's inventions. I don't know what that means to you, but divine downloads. And Lord, we would just even release your joy and your peace and a confidence within these people to arise into new levels that as they walk through these situations, Lord, they fully see your glory in the whole scheme of things. And they would continually be encouraged and continually have your peace from heaven. Wrap it around them, Lord. You are so, so good. Everybody just hold your arms out just for a minute.
Spirit of God, rest on us right now. Rest on us. What he's going to do right now, I feel like this is what he said he's going to do. With your arms out, and you're being faithful right now, he's going to rest on you, and you're going to feel that weight of the Holy Spirit. And when you want more, think about it. Think about what you're asking for. We're constantly, give us more, give us more, give us more. God's saying, you ain't even, you ain't even dealt with what you have. You can barely contain what you have. He wants to give us more. But there comes, there comes an obedience with that. There comes a dedication to that. There comes a lifestyle of praying and fasting that comes along with that. That's why he told me, he said, when we step into this next season, I need you to get healthy. So I started losing weight because I want my legs to be able to carry the load that he's going to have for us. I want to be able to carry that load because I want more. I want more of him. I want more of the power that heaven has for us. I want to be able to defeat the woes of the enemy more and more and more each day. That's what we're supposed to do, live in that. As your arms are up, you feel they get heavy. And it's the weight of your arms, but just the weight of heaven is like that. If you want that, we've got to get fit. Physically fit. I'm telling you, we have to get physically fit. We can't run around unfit and then, then go, why, why, why am I hurting? Why, am, why, why is this happening to me? Why are things going on in my life? I'm just going to be straight up with you. We need to start eating right. Stretching. Our bodies were made to do that. We're supposed to do that. And in that, we're going to be able to carry the glory that God's bringing to us. Because there's a, there's a people coming. They're coming. In the north, south, east, and west. And they're coming. So we can have all that to give to them. You can let your arms down. I just love filling it. I love the glory of God. I love sitting in it. I love resting in it. I love soaking in it. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's going to be a powerful. It's going to be a powerful time. I just believe, I believe there's been a touch this morning. I believe that God's touched you this morning. I believe that he's touched you. Agent Orange has no authority so you keep your smile you keep your joy because it comes from him don't let the emotions get in the way and I know they're there don't let the joy override that the joy of the Lord is our strength strong. team comes up this morning and stands up here. I feel like there's a few of you that need to pray. Shelly and Tammy. <clears throat> if you don't know Jesus, I encourage you to get to know him. Not, I'm not talking about the playing around. Yeah, I ask him to come in my heart, live in my life. That's not even in the Bible. I 
Ask him to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Ask Holy Spirit to reside inside of you and live in you and be a part of your life. That's what you need to do. Invite Holy Spirit in and cast the enemy away. It's not a prayer of like what we've heard that Jesus it's Jesus forgive me in my sins. We've heard all kinds of different prayers, all kinds of different things. And it's just words and people say words and they don't they're not mean anything because it's not really coming from the heart. But we need to confess our sins and ask him to forgive us of our sins. That's where the that's where it's going to happen at. And after that, there's going to be a work that follows that. There's going to be a good work that follows that. There's going to be fruit that comes after that, that follows that. So if you need to pray this morning, if there's something that you're dealing with this morning, you need someone to help you pray through that, I encourage you to come up to one of the ladies up here and um, let them pray with you this morning. And then we'll close this thing up. We'll give it five more minutes. Come and pray. need to pray. service. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. Thank you, Nate, for playing a part of Satan. We're going to release our Nate. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break this off of him because we spoke some stuff on him this morning, like he's Satan. He's not. He's Nate. He's a Superman of God. So, <laughs> so we just break anything off of him this morning that would have tried to attach to him with this acting out of, of being something that he's not. So we just believe in Nate this morning. We believe in everything that God's doing in him. He's growing. I've watched him grow, like not tall, but I've watched him grow in his spirit. Um, from the first time I met him to now, he's went from a baby to a to a young man, growing to be the father that God has called him to be. So thank you guys for your prayer for our men. Men, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the house of the Lord. It's so powerful that we have men who are leaders leading our families. And Nate is one of those. Thank you, Nate. Bless you. All right, so be healed in Jesus' name. Be here next Wednesday in Jesus' name. Whatever you guys do on Wednesdays, I don't know what you guys do on Wednesdays, but I mean, this is the pl- this is the place to be. It's gonna be it's gonna be a power powerful Wednesday. I believe the Lord's just gonna move on us, and um, like He has been. So um, whatever you're doing on Wednesday, stop. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
some of you are working, doing all kinds of that. I'm just kidding. But just, just be here if you can and uh, pour into what God's doing because prayer is the, one of the most important things that we can do. And the other most important thing is worship. The enemy don't like it when we worship. He does not like it when we worship. But our prayers must be effective. So thank you. Nate has something, I think, um, or Shelly or somebody. So. I just want to take one second to share something that an exciting vision and it all ties into today. Uh, in 2019, I was praying in the spirit at my kitchen table. And when I say Africa, don't get hung up on Africa. Just listen to what I'm saying. But he took me into a vision of Africa and I was standing on a hillside. And as I looked across, I soon realized that I was in Africa because of the surrounding and the plains and, and everything. But as I'm looking around, there was another hillside to the left here and there was an alpha lion looking up the hill and his mane was just like blowing in the wind. And as I'm staring at this, I begin to hear the words, though the devil prowls around like a lion. And as I'm hearing this, I look back and here comes an army that wasn't there before, but there's an army of lions as far as the eye can see walking straight towards the alpha. And it says, as I, you know, as the devil prowls around like a lion roaring to see who he can devour, these lions, both male and female, will go face to face with fear and death and they will crush the evil one's force. Thanks. That's awesome, Nate. That, again, is just confirmation, another word of the Lord that we can release over these people from the reports. So thanks for sharing that. Um, we'll close with this. I wanted to share last week and forgot uh, water immersion was uh, two weeks ago and coming up quickly, March 26th, 26th will be our next water immersion. We're not sure if it'll be here or the other building. Oh, it'll be here. So anyway, it may be a horse trough or a blow up hot tub, but <laughs> we're going to have water immersion service. <laughs> But I thought it was so powerful. So Nate, in the morning, had shared how he saw angels stirring the water. And we have had that spoken before to us by other people. So we just have always thanked God for that. Well, we had our granddaughter that night. We'd had her for four days. And so she was with us for the water experience, uh, to meet Jesus in the water. She's seven years old. Um, Monday, Tammy and I were talking with her and just ministering to her and sharing about the love of Jesus about upon her life. And, and we said, well, how was your experience with Jesus in the water when you got in? And she said, oh, well, I had an angel touch me. And, I, and we were like, whoa, okay, can you draw us a picture? So she gets the paper and pen out, and she's starting to draw. And she says, well, one touched me, but there were four angels. They were purple, orange, yellow, and green. So then we're, we know colors have meanings. So purple's royalty, orange is deliverance, uh, green is life, and yellow is revelation or glory. Yeah, I don't Anyway, so she drew the picture. It's beautiful, and she just made little lines of each color of angel. But only one touched her, and it was the orange one for deliverance, which just means freedom, which she needs, like all of us. So I just thought, what a testimony that he shares what he saw, and then, um, and Faye went in with her, so, like, Faye was already in, and so Hope just went into Faye's arms, and, and she said, and I wasn't under very long. I didn't stay under long like most people. I was just under and up, but she wanted to make sure I knew that one of the angels had touched her. I just thought that was powerful, and, and you should see her picture. I've got it. I'll have uh, Faye put it up next week. Maybe we can see it together. Anyway, have a great week. Um, be encouraged. Be expecting great reports. All right.